All right, you guys, so we are officially streaming. It takes, I would say it takes a few moments for it to roll over um, okay. online. Um, but Ziada, are you okay with helping me with these comments? Yeah, you'll read in the comments, yeah, sure. Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am, yes, ma'am, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, family. Please pass the greetings as you enter in. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please give salams and share. Please give salams and share. You contribute back to the Dope Muslim Woman podcast when you simply share um, our live. We appreciate you. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, everybody. Hope you guys are doing okay. All right. It's been that. Well, welcome to the Dope Muslim Woman Podcast, everybody. Um, Assalamu alaikum. This is your girl, Sabria Mills, the host of the Dope Muslim Woman Podcast. And um, I am rejoined with my amazing co-host, Ziada Fini. <laughs> she's going to keep me um, she gonna keep me right today. <laughs> I'll just talk a little interest in. Um, <laughs> um, but alhamdulillah, I, I'm really um, happy that we're going to be talking about the wait for love. I've been talking about this episode for a while now, and I really wanted to have a topic or a discussion around the aspect of waiting. Um, I think we sort of take it for granted, the idea of waiting or the ideals of waiting. We sort of take it for granted, and we don't really talk about the process, what people go through, or anything like that. So this will be a really candid and open and honest discussion. And I am joined with my lovely friend. This is a dear, near dear friend of mine. I share some of our pictures on my on my live on my uh, stories today because she's just very dear to me. She's an educator, though, of 17 years. She's an amazing mathematician. Um, she's a mother of two beautiful kids. She's an Atlanta native and um, an active member of the Atlanta Masjid community. She is the daughter of Ahmed and Marjorie Marie. May Allah have mercy on her soul. Um, mm -hmm. um, and she is an amazing blogger um, of Hagar Lives. That's the name of the blog. Um, so, alhamdulillah. So, we are joined with the lovely Aisha Kareem. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Alhamdulillah. And I just want to say, you ladies look absolutely dazzling today. So, you got to thank you. I love them. I say so myself. We're definitely talking about the weight. So, Alhamdulillah, I'm going to, you know, we're just going to get right into this topic. We're not even going to beat around the bush because there's a lot to go over and talk about. So Aisha, you know, I put, I wanted to engage you and I keep telling people this, but I wanted to engage you in this topic because like I said, I got to witness, I think, majority of your weight, you know, at the mess, just seeing you around and things like that. I got to see your process and we had so many conversations about it. Um, you know, of course, you know, everybody gets the famous question when you're getting married, when are you going to marry sis? All of that. But, um, I always felt like personally that, um, you always exuded grace during your process. Like you really were just graceful about your responses and just, you know, mashallah, I I'm sure it wasn't easy, but I just love the way you sort of executed, lived out your weight. So I just wanted to say that first and foremost, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> All right, so, so let me just let me just kind of we got to go back to a place that's not pleasant. Okay, mm -hmm. so when we're talking about this, we're not really talking about the aspect of like you know um, before you are married for the first time. So those that are maybe waiting to actually identify their spouse, that's not really the context of this conversation. We are talking about after heartbreak and loss. Mm -hmm. So um, after something like divorce, um, a painful divorce, many of us we take years to pick up the pieces. We have some, some of us have to go through therapy and a lot of like mindset shifts have to happen. Can you talk me through just a little bit of the process of navigating through this sort of period right after divorce? Because that's sort of the beginning stage of the wait. Um, so tell me what a little bit of what that process is like of kind of getting through that painful stage. Yes. Uh, mashallah. Um, first, I want to thank you for your um, your support, you know, from the beginning. And, you know, even those times when you saw me and I seemed to be very graceful and, you know, um, holding up well, you know, maybe on the inside, I was on the brink of tears and a, and a breakdown, emotional breakdown. Um, but alhamdulillah, you know, um, I would say the main thing is, is just calling on Allah, right? Um, so, you know, there was the period of separation, physical separation um, from my uh, ex-husband. Um, we were married for nearly 15 years. 
Um, and at the end of that 15 years, Allah blessed us with two beautiful children. So uh, my children, when we separated, were, uh, I would say, three years old, my oldest, and one year old, just to give you an idea of um, what, what I was working with in addition to that separation and, and um, pending divorce. Uh, and then it took us probably almost two years for the divorce to be final, you know, um, in, the, in the legal system, in the courts. And so um, during that two year period from the physical separation uh, until we were, you know, legally um, divorced, uh, there was a lot of people didn't even know that I was in the situation that I was in. Um, you know, many people now tell me that they didn't know that I was separated or divorced until maybe like three years after the fact. So, um, and I think a part of that was, you know, I was in shock, um, a, a state of, you know, heartbreak, disillusionment. Um, you know, I was just really just, holding on right and and so for me a lot of that was just getting over the shock myself in order to open myself up to let it be known to the community um and then also as you hear you know it's very common for uh people that are going through divorce to feel you know a, a guilt and shame so i was dealing with that as well but i think a lot of it was just the shock right and so um you know Allah was, you know, as he always is, subhanahu wa ta'ala was very gentle with me in that time where I for, I would say probably maybe, hmm, it could have been a year, you know, since I was, you know, kind of like <laughs> put to the side or um, made aware that, that we were moving in the direction of divorce for me to accept it, embrace it. And I was even thinking that maybe there could be some reconciliation. Mm -hmm. um, because of, it was just so extreme, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I know that we talked about not going into the details of that, that breakup, but it was very extreme. Even, you know, now a good six to seven years later, it, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah, so mashallah, you know, I, I would say the key is, is asking Allah, you know, like, what do you want me to get from this? Um, so at, at the beginning, I was calling on Allah, you know, uh, calling on my Lord to, you um, to maybe try to, like I was saying, help me reconcile this. You know, how can I, you know, get get my ex husband to come to his senses? Because you know, like you're you're missing out on something. Like you know, who would want to be separated from someone like me? I'm just like anyway. So okay. <laughs> you know, especially at the, at the time, right? You know, like we have these two young kids, and um, uh, we're at a, you know we're at a crossroads in our lives. We're in a, you know we're in our early thirties. Da 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 da. So so I I, I went through that. And then, you know, it took uh, a lot of servants, those who loved me, you know, my family, my brother who I moved in with after I was separated from my ex, um, dear friends to kind of gently make me realize that Aisha, I don't think that this is going to, to lead back into a healthy marriage, right? Like you need to realize that it, it, may, be, it may be time to call it quits. It may be time to, to move forward and it's gonna be tough but you got to pull yourself together and you do what's best for yourself, do what's best for your kids, do what's best for your faith and your dean, right? And yeah. your sanity. Um, so, you know, at that point I had to, I mean, it was just going through the motions, you know? Um, I remember during that period, I got my first set of, you know, like thicker beads, like real thicker beads that I picked out myself. It wasn't like a gift that people had brought back from Hajj, you know, that type of thing. Um, and so just staying in, in thicker, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, I have a very supportive family, a family that's, you know, um, rooted in the faith. And, you know, um, especially, you know, my mom was was there, you know, from the beginning, may Allah be pleased with her uh, and grant her paradise mm -hmm. and, and really just championing for me and my children, you know, um, you know, with her insight and foresight, she saw early on, she saw the signs of like, this is not going well, you know, and she was like, I got to help my baby out, even though she realized and respected that I was an adult and that I had my own wisdom and that I knew, you know, the the details and the ins and outs of my marriage the best more than she did. But, you know, that motherly wisdom and intuition, she knew that, OK, I'm going to I'm going to be patient with her. But, you know, she was right there from the time that things started to break down. You know, I would say maybe even two to three years before the actual separation to to the very end, you know, even until, mashallah, she was. Um, in hospice, you know, there, we were still dealing with things six years later, you know, dealing with, you know, the, the aftermath of things. 
um, and co-parenting. But mashallah, um, like I was saying, you know, my brother was there to support me. Um, you know, people that are supposed to be there, um, friends who would listen to, you know, I, I was also, like I said, because I was in this state of shock and disillusionment. And even though I was turning to my Lord in the reality of things, uh, I, I was kind I kind of had this kind of like, um, uh, idealistic view of like what this could be, or I was still kind of in dream mode. Like, no, like I, I didn't want this to happen. I had never imagined that I would be in this situation. Um, it, it was such a drastic situation and change from my previous condition. And so, you know, I, I would, the way I was acting out initially wasn't so rational, but mm -hmm. I had those dear friends that were still there and just listening, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I know that I've, I've listened to you and Ziada talking to others. I think last week when you were all were talking about oh, divorce um, and you all were saying how it's so important for those who are going through any hardship, especially these women that are, you know, in some compromising situation, whether it's going through a separation or divorce, whether they feel like they have, you know, a narcissist as a husband, um, <laughs> um, if they, you know, if they're dealing with some type of abuse, whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, uh, financial, uh, that is so important for the community members to really just listen, right? And just <laughs> and just be there for them. Uh, and so alhamdulillah, I had all of that. And when I think back, when I look back at that situation, even though it was so extreme, you know, with every difficulty, there is ease and there's relief, right? And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, a, a nice interpretation or, or wording of that ayah is in accepting the difficulty, that's when the ease comes, right? Mm -hmm. So- um, just learning to ease into that, you know, it, it, this is a test, we're going to be tested, um, mashallah. But once I was able to just realize that, you know, um, this is a test, but I know that Allah is taking me through this because he loves me and I need to grow from it. Right. Um, and there's something on the other side of it. So when I look back, you know, there were people that were placed into my life at that critical moment that, um, were really just there to help me through it, you know, almost like angels, you know, and, and I was just thinking about that. I was preparing for this talk, just some beautiful souls that just kind of came like out of the woodworks, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, you know, and I had had some dealings with them previously, but the way that they came in and showed up in that moment, even from a distance, but Allah just made it so magical um, where it was exactly what, what my soul needed. Uh, right. to deal with, it was a buffer, right? To deal with the the craziness that I was dealing with in the separation. So, you know, just having that support, um, calling on Allah, asking Allah, you know, uh, for that relief, for that mercy. And and what do you want me to gain from this? Um, mashallah. So. Um, well, thank you so much. That, that was, it was beautiful to just, to just hear it personally for me. Um, Ziad, I don't, I haven't been looking at the con. Do you want to bring in any comments before you go on to the next question? Or are we uh, good? Let's see if we have anything. Um, no comments, just, um, just speaking about the fact that they, you know, appreciate your words, that you were supported, but um, that you made it known that she was there for you, that you, your mom was there for you. And um, that we know that you're not alone and it makes people feel that though they're not alone, that they are experiencing some of the same things that other people are experiencing. So that's good that you should shared your story so that people are feeling as though they're not alone in the same process. So that's always a good thing. Thank you, Ziada. You're welcome. Okay, Ziada. So we're going to go into, <laughs> you good or you want oh. to? Okay. No, I could do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> So the next question that we have for you are breakups and divorce are a way of tearing us down and not letting us get back up. Many times they can take away our self-worth and self-esteem, making us feel like we're nothing. What are some ways we can tap back into ourselves in preparation for a new relationship, which is really important, finding who we are through this process? And I mm -hmm. want to preface it before I don't, because sometimes people sure. come forth. Not everybody goes through this self-worth issue right. or anything like that Absolutely. so this is just <clears throat> in it for if that is the case what are right. some ways it? Yeah. it just can be traumatic so exactly just, how trauma. do you come from tra trauma of being married and now you are single how do you navigate through that mm -hmm. so yeah. Aisha and I wanted to say because I think you tapped already into some of the ways you navigated through that but I want to talk about you know, where that painful place, that village carrying you to now the point where you're kind of opening yourself up to some possibilities of newness. 
what, what was that transition like? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I love it. The possibilities of newness. Um, well, you know, you, keeping in mind that, you know, to have that wisdom, right? That that village wisdom of the elders, of just others that have gone through similar things, and it may not be divorce, but other tests and trials that we're going to go through, uh, and knowing from our faith that Allah is is our God is merciful, right? And so um, He doesn't put a burden on us greater than we have the strength to bear. That um, that He loves us, He wants the best for us, He wants to purify us, um, and just realizing, you know, that that common idea of when, when something is taken away from you, you know, to have this idea that there's something better, right, in store. So if you go to through this with all of that, you know, and you're gonna need reminders. Cause like I said, you're like, you, you're, you, it's, it's a blow, right? What you're going through. But if you have that outlook of the, it's gonna get easier, it's gonna get better. My God is most merciful. Um, he loves to reward, right? Uh, and to show his majesty. Um, and his greatness to his servants who believe in that. So that definitely helped, you know. So at a certain point, you realize this tremendous freedom, right? Um, I was listening to a talk about from Alicia Keys, and she was talking about, you know, self care mm -hmm. and this idea that one of the most important uh, ways of getting that self care is being alone and being in solitude. And I was definitely mm -hmm. in solitude. Um, when, when I separated, I was, and, and some know my story, but I, and like I said, I don't wanna dwell on this, but just to give you a glimpse of what happened is that I was uh, separated from my two young children that were you know, three and, and one at the time. So not only was I stripped from you know, my marriage of, for many years, over a decade long, but then you know, these two beautiful souls and, and young innocent uh, babies and spirits that Allah had blessed us with, they were taken from me. And so um, what was I going to say about that? So, so yeah. So then when I went to be with my brother, um, I, I was, it was in, I was like by myself, you know, and all of a sudden when I realized that, okay, Allah, you're still with me, right? Um, the angels are with me, l my loved ones, my support team, they're still here, right? This is the test. Then you start to open yourself up to like the miracles, right? Like this, there's something, there has to be something beautiful in this, right? You know, the story of Hagar and, 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 and being in the desert and not having water and then like knowing like Allah, if, if you have willed this, I know there's something good that's gonna come from this, right? So yeah, so you know, <laughs> so if you open yourself up to that, then you realize like, hey, let me tap into this newness, you know, that um, Sabria was mentioning. And, and you have to be, and, and in my case, because, you know, I'm a mom, um, I was so used to being in kind of a committed relationship for so long. I wasn't like, you know, out there. I, I had to be very responsible, right? You know, um, we women, especially Muslim women, um, we have, because of the, the not, definitely not the burden, but that, that role, the status of motherhood and parenthood, you know, being the, the nurturer or whatever is on us. Even if I'm not physically with my kids, that's constantly mm -hmm. that's, you know, in my conscience and, um, and on my heart. So, um, so basically, you know, I realized that <laughs> um, getting kind of trying to get to what Sabria's question is, is hinting at, you know, I realized that, you know, my ex-husband and I had been together since I was a, a sophomore in college. So imagine I'm 18 years old, right? Mm, okay. I, I separate divorce, what, at the age of 35. Wow everything is very different, right? So if you're talking about like, I, I get out there and then if I am looking to remarry because relationships love, you know, people that know me know that I love love, you know? Right. Uh, <laughs> relationships, marriage, it's very important to me. Even if I don't know the ins and outs, even if I still have a lot to learn, I'm, I'm something I'm always going to be um, following and pursuing, inshallah, mm -hmm. because I know that it's such an important thing for me as a human being, um, as a woman, and as part of my faith. Um, but <clears throat> I realized that the landscape for for looking for a mate was like totally different, right? Uh -huh. so, <laughs> so here I am, I'm out there, you know. The pickings are thin. <laughs> and I like you said the landscape. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, for lack of a better word, and. <laughs> So, you know, I open myself up to discussions and conversations, relationships, you know, courtships to marriage. 
And I realized that maybe my values and what I'm looking for does is not aligned with what the, the brothers are bringing to the table. Um, or just how, you know, it, with the time of social media and online dating, and I'll be honest, like I've never been on a site and I would always tell friends, like I don't, I pray to, to a lot that I never have to go on one of these sites. It's just because it's just not my personality. You yeah. know, I have many loved ones, family members, cousins, you know, beloveds that have been successful through that, that forum. But it was something that I just wasn't ready for, you know, because the way that I started, it just was not that. Yeah. Uh, so, mashallah. So, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, the 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 discussions, conversations, courtships that I that I did engage in during the wait, um, I think, you know, Allah is still there, right? Um, and just preparing me for the right one, inshallah. Amen. I made that cute, but we're gonna dig a little deeper. Ziada, what the um, yeah. audience? I need you guys to guide me. Uh, so the audience said, please touch on how to adjust, how to manage changes in these friends and community projects that were shared in the marriage. These, the people and things that become a part of us, um, but seem to choose different sides. Could you speak about um, that type of loss? And I know you you hinted that also before, um, Sabria. Yeah, so we've all experienced it, especially if you've grown up in a community. <laughs> you know, I grew up in one in Baltimore, and then when I lived in Atlanta and went through my first divorce, people knew us together. So trying to reestablish yourself out of that, and then you know, people do choose sides. So if you would like mm -hmm. to elaborate on that, if mm -hmm. you want. Absolutely. Absolutely, mashallah. Allah. Allah. This yeah. is Allah. Rahim. Shaitan Rajim. You know, when I had previous conversations with Sabria, I talked about um, the reason I kind of hesitated for a long time because you know Sabria, she's on top of her game, right? With, she, with what she's doing, which is it's so. Yes, um, is. Yes, she is, and it's mm -hmm. so necessary. Yes, it is. It's very needed. Bless it and increase mm -hmm. her in this. But I was afraid that I would share too much and expose too much. So we talked about that. And um, I will say that, yes, right, that is a painful part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. But alhamdulillah, it is painful. But alhamdulillah, the, the pain, I think the most painful thing for me, more than people choosing sides, the most painful thing for me was just just the turning of sides or just the, uh, what is it? Just the, the loss of allegiance from the one I was in my marriage with, right? And, 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 mm. and, and their family, right? Like that was the most shocking thing. So once I was able, and, and you know, mashallah, I was hit hard with that in that department with just in that area. So I was able to handle and understand those friends and community members who I could tell were struggling with choosing sides and who, you know, for whatever reason chose my ex's side. Um, I understand that, you know, it's, it's just a natural thing. It's a natural phenomenon of divorce. Um, and, and I would say, you know, so I have a couple of, you know, examples, but then what you also see is just that double standard, you know, what, what you notice that the choosing the side of the man just comes out so strong and, and it's, and still I can't explain it. Um, you know, I will say that some people are very charismatic. You know, my ex-husband, those who know him, um, he is a very charismatic person. He's a people person. He's a leader, you know, in many regards in the community and in his career and, and those, those types of things. So I will just say that it was very hard for people to except the fact that we weren't together, they just couldn't understand like why, mm -hmm. you know, some people, they saw us as like power couple or the whatever couple. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and I understand I've been on the other side and looked at couples like that myself and then been shocked when they've divorced. But for some reason, there's this tendency that we need to get to the bottom of, of why, you know, people just kind of automatically assume that something, so, there's more fault on the woman. Um, or is it anyway, but because like I said, it's more personal. It's because also of who my ex is. Right. But you know, I so Hagar lives, my first article of Hagar Lives was 2016. So the blog that my sister and sister and I do together. And it was called, and I may be uh the title may be a little wrong, but coming out as a divorced woman in the African American Muslim community, right? Mm -hmm. So I was telling you that it took me a while to come out, right? So 
some people didn't know until three, four, four years in to my uh, singlehood that I was single. And, um, and I started that blog post by, may Allah bless her, may Allah forgive me if I am hurting her by bringing this up, if she's watching. But I started by talking about uh, a, a note, a email, a text that I got from a dear friend, um, a, a couple friend, right? So when I was married, it was a, it was the wife of my ex-husband's, one of his best friends. Okay, forgive me, I'm maybe being too specific, but, um, and I was expressing that it showed in the response from this dear, beautiful sister that it was kind of like, okay, we get it, you're going through a lot, but don't forget that this is a good brother and you know, he's a good father. And almost, it was like, you need to be careful about how you are Uh oh. Right. That's a good point. She's she froze for a minute. Let's see if she mm -hmm. comes back. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aisha is frozen for a moment, guys. Um, we're gonna give her a minute to reboot herself. Um, Ziada, do we have? I'm gonna yeah. take her take her out while she reboots. Okay. Um, yeah. Do we have a comment that we can bring in while while Aisha comes mm -hmm. back? Sure. There's a feeling of being made to feel that you're deficient or didn't do something or do something to cause the divorce and don't and you don't feel heard. So um, that I guess she's saying that sometimes you are made after a divorce that you're deficient and that you did something wrong for the divorce to happen to you. I think the point that she was making also about um, when people choose sides that in how we vilify Muslim women. I remember a friend actually recently asking me that, now, mm -hmm. you know, what is it with sometimes in Islam, you see, um, I, you know, that I don't feel sometimes that Muslim women are supported the way that we should be, you know, and that's from a male perspective. And I think it's true sometimes, oftentimes you would think that in Islam, where the rule of how we liberated women through Islam and gave, you know, the right to vote and, you know, where they weren't killing the female children anymore, just with right. the Prophet I'm speaking about how you're supposed to be kind toward women and protect us, that oftentimes they believe what the men what the man says over what the woman says, you know. So we were just speaking about your beautiful points that you were saying. Thank you saying you came yeah. back. Can we just can we just take a moment? You just came back, like, I mean, I don't know what happened to the lighting, but my phone was. You got a little <laughs> brighter. You look a little brighter. Yeah. <laughs> this is the um, the genius of the iPhone technology. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Laptop, okay. yeah, the iPhone. You need to see your beautiful outfit even more. You look even more radiant. Mashallah, Aisha, you look regal. Okay, Aisha, thank you, Ziada, for filling in with that point. Absolutely. It was very powerful. Aisha, I want you to, you know, culminate and finish that point when you were that you were making. Cause you were about to say something. I hope you remember. Mashallah. No, basically that, um, you know, there is that pain of seeing, especially your sister friends. You know, I didn't care about the brothers. You know, I expect that that they're going to either side with him, especially if they're his friend. That's understandable. Um, that's what friends do, especially if they don't know the details, right? And and I had to accept the fact that people don't know the details, right? Yeah. Um, so you're just they're going to go off of their basic human tendencies, right? And people. Oh, oh. Lisa Aisha. Oh, no. so okay. Oh, you came back again. Oh, and such beautiful face. <laughs> okay. Oh, mashallah. So Aisha seems to be having a little bit of technical difficulties. I don't know if it has to do with the rain. There's always a storm. Oh, okay, it, I was going to ask if it's raining yeah, there. Okay. It, it, well, at least in my area. I mean, I'm, okay. in, I'm, in, a, I'm in the country. Um, you want me to read a comment from um, yeah. someone? Okay. Yeah, so I wanted to just speak on this real quick, just because it's like, it's something that is a very sensitive topic for me. It's just this aspect of, you know, how you are treated and how sometimes we are treated um, when we go through this divorce process. And I think, you know, people do feel like they have to choose sides. And one of the things I've even experienced is a lot of people have come to me and, and, and been like, um, they've even said like, hey, you want me to, you know, like cut off your ex or block them on social media. Right. And, 
even right. that, I'm like, right. no, you right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, that's yeah. not necessary. You know it's what I mean? Not. So it's like, and then also I wanted to just say this, people also assume that every divorce is ugly. Now there's a Absolutely. lot of divorces that are ugly, but there's actually some divorces that are pretty amicable and they've right. made it put to a point where they're co-parenting and they've kind of, you know, maybe worked through mm -hmm. some of the, uh, the tension years Absolutely. before leading up to the divorce. So it's Absolutely. like, you feel like you have to choose a side, but it's like, we over here chilling, like we co-parenting. Right. Absolutely. Okay. You know, so I just wanted to mention that as well. Um, yeah. So you mentioned um, on the other side of pain. We're going to try with Aisha. We're trying, y'all. Uh, my, my audience is real patient up in here. I see y'all staying with us. Oh, Aisha, that's because you got all the goods. All right, babe. Aisha, <laughs> we're going to culminate this point so we can go to the next point. <laughs> Bismillah. 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 Amen. I will Amen. just say that, you know, there were some, case, there were some instances where, um, where I, I experienced some heartbreak over you know, um, people that I thought were a part of my support team that showed up for my my ex in major ways that kind of was a betrayal to me, um, mashallah. And, um, you know, you just pray for forgiveness, not too hard on yourself, not too hard on others. And just realizing that you, it makes you realize that divorce not only takes its toll on the individuals that are going through it, but it takes its toll on the whole community. Absolutely. Sure. It really mm -hmm. does. And I was it able really to see does. that. Um, so, you know, getting over all and taking things personally, you just see that everybody is struggling with this in certain ways and everyone has to deal with their nafs in certain ways um, and getting through the process. That's Much beautiful, sure. Ayesha. That's, that's beautiful. Um, all right. So I wanted to just talk about you. You mentioned how, you know, your relationship, you know, kind of orientated person. So that was something that probably you were once you were ready and kind of healed, you were, you know, kind of considering your next relationship. However, you mentioned that you didn't find alignment with a lot of the uh, situations you were experiencing. What did she say? The, um, <laughs> the landscape. The the landscape. Landscape. Very, very nice, very nice, very, <laughs> very nice. So, <laughs> so why do you share why it's important to wait for what you're aligned with? And what are some things to consider while you're waiting and navigating the who's and all what's coming at you as a single Muslim sister? And I definitely yeah. have to comment. Every <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Inshallah, you may have to ask me parts of that question again because I okay. get off, off topic. But I will say that, um, you know, one thing is Allah gives us what we need. Right. So it's very important that the beginning of that waiting period that you make your intentions be known um, to the universe. You know, Allah knows what we need, but of course, he loves for us to call on him and to confide in him. Um, so let your intentions be known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let your intentions be known to the universe, to those who you can trust that will not you know, spread your information and your your heart's desires and hopes. Right. Um, so with that said, um, MashaAllah. So yes. So what I need is that Allah will give you what you need. So early on, I was telling Sabria in our preliminary discussions that, you know, uh, I, I had, there was male energy that I needed, right? So you have, I have the male energy of my, my Quam, my brother who took me into his home and, and sheltered me and, and took care of me and made sure that I didn't have to worry about uh, putting a roof over my head and those types of things. So that was taken care of, right? Um, but but then you still have those other needs as a woman, right? Um, that, you know, that your brother can't satisfy, <laughs> mashallah. Right. No, he cannot. <laughs> but, but at the same time, Allah knew that I wasn't ready for a real relationship at the time, right? Because I had, what I had gone through was trauma, uh, mashallah. And, and so, you know, the, I think Allah placed people in my life that, that filled that void um, without it going to some serious level, right? And so it reminds me of a, something, a quote of one of my dear sisters who's a little bit older than me and she's fabulous and she's like a mentor of mine. And I remember I had an iftar at my house um, early on once I had moved from my brothers and, and secured my own place. And uh, we were talking and I was telling her because I'm always talking about, I mean, single women, a lot of times that's always the, the hot topic when we get together, right? So, you know, and I remember bringing up this idea of like, you know, because we were talking about the, the weight and being patient, right? And not mm -hmm. rushing into anything that's going to be just as um, dangerous as what you came from. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So I remember I was like, you know, yeah, it's easy for Muslim, for married, excuse me. It's easy for married women to say, yeah, just be patient and da 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 da. I'm like, they don't know what it's like. <laughs> or even other single women, you know, um, it, it's something different when you've been, you're so used to being in, in the arms of a man. You're so used to being yeah. taken care of in a relationship in, in, the, in the marriage institution. Then when you're like out there, it's it's a different thing and it's hard to just accept like yeah just you know be be cool and just pray right just right. Bigger. so you know that's a big part of it but i remember this this fabulous mentor of mine said you know oh she was like without a doubt you know you got to keep the male energy around <laughs> you know she, she was like i always have my male i forget how she said it but like my male companions and it was kind of like just so you could have that male energy yeah in the in the interim right so anyway um and Allah gives you what you need so you know if, if you know if you're trying to be upright you're trying to be appropriate you're trying to you know follow the guidelines and dictates of what our religion says is is appropriate and right and uh, healthy for a Muslim woman a single Muslim woman then um then you then that then mashallah it but know that you're going to be taken care of you know um somehow you're going to get what you need until you're really ready. So, so this is where Sabri, I'm going to need you to bring, bring me back to what the question was. So, no, you're fine. So, okay. What are some things to consider though, during the waiting process? Like, absolutely. Even, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So I would say going back to this idea of, you know, um, it being a beautiful freedom. I don't know if I mentioned or finished that topic mm. about uh, what Alicia Keys was saying about solitude. There is something that is so freeing, you know, and liberating about being single. You know, there are perks to being single. There are perks to being married and, you know, and, and still having close friends and family members that are married. You know, we have these conversations and we have different unique sets of struggles. Right. So I would say that it's really important that you take advantage of that moment of solitude. You take advantage of that moment of being freed up from the, the responsibilities of being a mother or excuse me, not the responsibility of being a mother. Um, you're gonna be a mother, but what happens if you're co-parenting, you're all of a sudden, you're not with your kids 100% of the time, mm -hmm. right, you know, outside of school and things like that, but you're sharing that time. Oftentimes there are cases where the mother is always with the kids. In my case, um, I my my uh, the father of my children uh, is with them, like for example, primarily in the summer. So right now, I was just on the phone with my baby girl earlier today and she was like, mommy, let's talk about how long it's been since I've seen you. Like we, we were on FaceTime, but like since we've touched each other and we realized it's going on five weeks. Now that's, it shouldn't be that way. This is different circumstances. It just so happens that our, our visitation schedule is such that um, my weekends, every other weekend has fallen on a holiday that he has rights to, and he will have, have his holiday. So, um, mashallah, so inshallah, I'll be with him next week. But there's something that only co-parents understand about that. It's, 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 it's heartbreaking at times, especially early on when you're getting used to that, you know, and, and, but you go through this loneliness period, but it opens you up to, to like be with yourself, to know yourself, to reflect on what you want, um, other things outside of marriage and, and motherhood. Okay. So I would say, you know, really take that time, think of it as a gift from Allah, right? So if you if you think of Allah as being merciful and taking you through this so that you can grow, then, you know, start to ask yourself, like, or what are some things that you want to do? How can you take advantage of, of this time? You know, a lot of people, they if, do you want to go back to school? Do you want to, you know, um, try something new? Like, you know, what Sabria's doing, which is fantastic. <laughs> do you want to, you know, build your financial um, well, I'm out there, sis, situation. Um, do you want to work on um, getting yourself ready for this amazing love that is to come? You know, um, you know. Do you want to get more involved in the community? You know, and, and service. Uh, and so there's so many things that you can do that you can't do so um, enthusiastically and wholeheartedly when you are married. So, so I would say, you know, to really just kind of tap into, um, hey, what are the opportunities that I can uh, take advantage of during this time? I think that's so important. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you can become depressed, you know, and um, yeah, it can be hard. 
it can be hard if you don't look at it as a blessing and a mercy too, and a test that Allah is putting you through only so that you can be purified and that you can grow. So there's been a lot of growth, even though, you know, I talk about all this stuff that I went through, you know, people that will sit there and listen to me, especially early on. Um, but at the same time, it's it's been amazing growth that has occurred, uh, new relationships, you know, and friendships, you know, I've gone deeper into that. Whereas before I had this mentality that, you know, I had to give so much to my marriage, like that relationship. And then my friendships were, I mean, I, I, I've always loved friendship and I love my sisterhood. Um, but it was kind of just like surface level, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but being able to really go deeper, you know, and explore that type of love, you know, uh, between two women or explore the love between your children, you, you and a child or you and a coworker or, you know, you and a hobby or an interest that you have. So I would say that those things are very important. Uh, let's see. And then of course, as I mentioned before, you know, uh, what saved me in the beginning was zikr and remembrance of Allah, right? Um, because of course, Allah knows you best. Allah knows what you need. Allah knows how you can um, reach that, the, the greatest potential that he has yeah. created you for. And he knows the type of mate that you need to help you get there. Um, and so really going, uh, making sure that you get to know yourself through getting to know your Lord, um, constantly calling on him, seeking guidance, and in the way that it's just a magical thing that happens from that, you know, um, I, I've just seen where when you turn to Allah, not only is the burden lightened um, and you start to see the beauty in all the situations, but then Allah starts to bring people in your, your circle and in your environment that are just beautiful and that are, or that are just there, sometimes maybe not so beautiful, but, um, but there to kind of just help you on that journey of growth. Um, so definitely. Wow. Definitely turn to Allah. That's yeah, so inshallah. Mashallah. Thank you, Amaisha. I appreciate that. Ziada, do we are we um any comments that we need to catch up on? Oh yeah. Um so let's see. Yadmin says it's also difficult when the man marries quickly after divorce for mamas who are trying to model marriage, parenting, etc. Sometimes your children may blame you in their innocence when they're feeling bad. So, you know, some, mm -hmm. oftentimes that can be hard, you know, for us as women um, after a divorce and they marry quickly and we are still single. Um, trying to explain that to children is um, one of the comments. And it's just always they feel as though um, the heathen is the part. What was what saved me? OK, that was different. She's saying what okay. saved her was that she was traveling and things of that nature. Okay. As you spoke about self-discovery, you know, like really during that time, how you have to discover who you are, that you're not a wife, you know, you're not a full-time mother, you find out exactly who you are as a human being. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So that's, that, those are powerful comments. Those are powerful comments. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah you, get, you, you know, we brace ourselves for that. I, I remember my mother, may Allah be pleased with her. She told me like, you know, Aisha, just, you know, be ready for your for him to get married really quickly. And it's like, you know, I've seen it, right? I've seen it with men in the community. I saw it with my own father, who I think remarried within a year. Um, so yes, what I will say, if you look at the positives of it, uh, is that in some ways, <laughs> my ex, by remarrying two years ago, um, he has he's modeled for my children just that act of parents remarrying. So that when when I inshallah do the same thing, it won't be so much of a shock. Oh, for yeah, for my children, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that they actually think it's normal, and they're actually yeah. expecting it. So that you know, Absolutely. when they talk to me, they're they're talking about marriage. You know, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that definitely sure. helps because that that mm -hmm. my situation the same thing happened. So it really mm -hmm. does help when you do get remarried or you introduce someone else into your child's life that this may be someone potentially for a marriage. You know, a long term relationship. Yes they already are used to the other parent having someone in their life. So um, it doesn't seem awkward that now mommy has someone because daddy has someone else as well. So it does absolutely. Help. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Aisha. So I'm gonna push you a little bit, but you brought it up earlier. We talked about it <laughs> off script. Oh my. I did a live on it. So, you know, we, 
we want to talk a little bit about the real. So when we talk about, I love that you brought in the aspect of what waiting is like for the divorced woman, the woman that has been had an intimate relationship day in and day out for years or however long with another brother, that spiritual intimate relationship that we know is, you know, it's, it, it permeates on so many levels, right? So, you know, we know waiting Islamically involves like not dating, controlling your desires, being mm -hmm. mindful of what you engage in. Aisha, I don't remember, I, re I don't know if you remember, but one time, I don't remember the event. There was some type of event at the masjid. And I remember asking, hey, Aisha, you're going to go? I don't know if you remember. And you, were, <laughs> and you told me this, and I thought this was so powerful. I never forgot it. And you said, you know, as a single woman, I can't go to everything. I have to be mindful of what I engage in. And I was just like, oh, but you can't just, you know, I didn't, it didn't connect, you know, because I was married at the time. And so it didn't quite connect to me. But could you, could you explain that a little bit? And let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. How you protect you kept yourself protected. Mm -hmm. Mashallah, yeah. So, um, oh man. So I will <laughs> say that the first time that I went to a singles social was with Zara, beautiful Zara that you had on the show yesterday or the yeah. day before, recently, um, in Houston, I believe it was at a, a conference, a Time to Be Grateful conference. Mm -hmm. And I remember being like, at that point, I had been single for, I would say, for at least four years. And it was my first time going to a singles event. Um, and I was like, I finally feel comfortable going here. One, I think I would. So when I was saying to you that you have to be, I have to be careful. You do have to be careful, right? Because as we said, you know, the double standard is real. Um, we cannot navigate this weight like men can and, and, and get the same results. Uh, at least from what I feel and what I've seen. So, you know, people are watching. You have to be very, during the wait, um, even though you want to move forward, you have to be very regardful of your the reputation that you have of yourself and how you're upholding that, um, how you're feeding into that. And so, um, I don't know. You tell me, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm working on trying to understand men more, you know, and, and I don't... <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm not the best one to know the nature of men, That's but, of <laughs> but I, from what I hear, you know, men, men don't, maybe don't think too fondly in some instances, um, or to don't feel too confident when they're dealing with a woman who has maybe dated so many other men, you know what I'm saying? Like there's certain things and it could be misconceptions, stereotypes, but they're real, they're out there. And, and so these things are always in the back of my mind as I'm moving and trying to navigate the space of trying to get back in a relationship, right? And, and meet the right person. Um, so yeah, so you do have to be very careful. I would say, so, so I, don't, I can't remember exactly that conversation I was having with you and yeah. what I was feeling about that. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't want, I wanted people to, to know that I was serious about it. And, and, and in my mind, it was a personal thing where I feel like if I if I show up too much at these events, if I seem like I'm overly eager, um, like I said, some of this is just personal Aisha issues, right? Mm -hmm. Or things that cross my mind. If I am on too many single Muslim, you know, Muslim forums, mm -hmm. um, if I'm chatting it up too much and commenting too, if I'm putting myself out there too much in, in, in Aisha's mind, it was it was making me um I don't know it was making me less of a oh man for lack of a better word I don't want to say less of a catch but like yeah. less special and like I mm. said this is this is me so when I this said that I'm real. probably just thinking of of how I feel and maybe in and how I felt was the result of what I had observed you know mm -hmm. um in my own situations so mm -hmm. you know in and my tactics may not be the best for someone else. What I will say is I think should be universal tactics in the weight is, you know, if you are serious about finding love again, finding love that Allah will be pleased with, mm -hmm. um, finding love that can be sustained within a healthy marriage moving forward, that looking and in, in looking for taqwa in the brother and in yourself, I'm not going to put it all on the brothers. Um, I've grown in this, in this weight as well. But really, the taqwa is 
is the most important. So, you know, um, for during this time, I have been, you know, like researching and um, surveying and trying to figure out what's important, you know, is it most important to find a brother who can provide financially or should I go for love or, you know, and, and the idea is inshallah, uh, the thing is that Allah is, is our razak. Allah is the provider, right? Allah is our wadud. He's the one that loves and gives us that affection that, that we need. And so if you really believe that, Allah is going to ultimately be the one that's going to give you what you need, right? And those provisions, they vary from woman to woman and what we need. Um, you know, I have a close friend who's like, Aisha, what I need is financial stability. Like that is at the top of my list. And I'm like, what I need is trust. Um, someone who puts Allah first and foremost, um, because I want to follow his lead and I need that. I realize if with everything that I've been through, like that's the most important for me, intimacy. Mm. And, you know, not just phys physical intimacy, but, you know, that intimacy that's just, that's beyond that, right? Mm. Um, someone that I can trust and that I can share my dreams and fears with and, and know that it will be okay and know that, um, that, that it's held sacred, right? Uh, so those are the things that are important to me. And 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 I, I forget wh where I was going with that, but I say all that to say that um, f f I think that it's so important for women who are serious to be regardful. <laughs> I'm thinking of the ayat about being regardful of you. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but just being regardful at all times of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look in yourself, in your actions. And like I said, I'm not perfect. And, and people who know me know I'm not perfect. I've made my mistakes. But if you're sincere, if you put your intentions out there, Allah is going to protect you. So even if you start to go down the wrong path or something, Allah is going to bring you back, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and then if you, if you make mistakes, you repent, right? Um, but, you know, in repentance, you, there's sincerity and you don't just keep doing the wrong thing over and over again. Right. But what I will say is that you got to be careful because, like I was saying, when I came out of a 15 year marriage and realized that the landscape was different, you know, there were there were other people. And a lot of times I'm engaging with you're engaging with other people that have been divorced. So they're traumatized, too. You know, it's not just women that are traumatized. I've come to find that men are traumatized and we're not seeking the help, the counseling that we need to. Um, or we're still in that stage of seeking the counseling that we need and, you know, and the therapy and all that, that we need to, and, and kind of cultivating this relationship with a lot that we need to. So, um, so sometimes you meet people at different stages of that journey and some people, they just want someone to talk to when they're not <laughs> tied up, yeah. you know, we call them the chit chat, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you're like, well, I'm really looking for marriage. And then and under the guise of looking for marriage. So some people will say, especially within the Muslim circle, they're like, I know I need to say I'm looking for marriage, but really I'm not so much in a hurry to get back into that type of relationship, right? Um, so so like I said, it's a lot of stuff that you get in that you come across when you're you know, out there in the wait and trying to find the right person. Um, yeah, I wanted to, yeah. Aisha, I wanted to bring it in for just a second with that, because I think that's important um, with women would Muslim women kind of experience, and I know men experience things too. I would love to get a brother's perspective on what they experience, but um, I want to know, like, what, what were some of the experiences? I know you say you have the chit chatters. What other type of? <laughs> I mean, what's, what's the category? See, I'm not trying to call people out. No. The waste of timers. The waste of time. The waste of timers. <laughs> Mashallah. But here's the thing. I do want to be clear that it, what I've learned is that it's not just the men. It's both sides, right? Yeah. We, we, so we, clear, we, we're not doing any male bashing. Mm -hmm. um, we don't believe in that on the Don't Muslim Woman podcast. But we, also, exactly. but we also give space for people's experiences. So I'm just asking you for your experience because your experience could really help. And it also can clarify what's really happening out here. So maybe people can, you know, navigate situations better. Like I talked about just the aspect of I think behavior is becoming a little bit weird now um, mm -hmm. in the single world, which I noticed. I didn't notice that, you know, prior when I was single, but I noticed it's a little bit odd. I'm not sure where the shift happened, where we're automatically just assuming sisters are so desperate that I'm going to do something really bizarre, like send a weird picture to her or, you know, I mean, say something really inappropriate or, you know, I, I you know, absolutely. Things you wouldn't expect to happen in the real world, you know? So that's what I'm kind of asking you. What type of, what type of experiences did you experience in that regard? So, yeah. So, you know, mashallah, um, 
Yeah. We're we're all navigating this and society has a hold on all of us, right? Yeah. Um, and you gotta be careful. Like I said, constantly calling Allah, make your intentions known because Shaitan is real and he's out there. And and I'm talking about within the Muslim community as we're talking about. Um, and these are, we're good people, right? But we get caught up sometimes. So you so it, it, those who just want someone to talk to, which is important, right? Um, you get lonely, but uh, <laughs> so there's that. Then something else that I've experienced. So you also have, um, you know, you've, I'll, I'll bring it up. It's the, the taboo topic, but it's it's real and it's becoming more real is the, the, the P word, polygyny, right? So, you, so you're so you also going to experience, um, uh, you know, the, the married brothers that are showing interest. Um, I remember when I was going through the separation and a couple of my single sisters, my, my you know, homegirls who had been single, um, they were like, Aisha, let me prepare you. Let's have this real talk as you are about to embark upon being single. Um, and, and you are a dope Muslim, Muslima, that, that you're going to get this attention. And, and it's not going to just be from single brothers. It's going to be from married brothers um, and get ready for that. So, and, and mashallah, you know, polygyny uh, is a very honorable um, act, especially as it was carried out by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So polygyny is not what I'm, what I'm attacking in any way whatsoever, but the approach, right? And it's something that we have to have conversations about, which is why I love what you're doing, you know, and others like yourself. Um, because if we do it in a vacuum, then we're just going to continue to run into these problems all the time. So, you know, just the, the things of whether it, the, the approach, meaning like so there are different pers perspectives on when should the first wife know about this, this pursuit of a second, you know, um, and, and how involved should she be? So, and I think that there are different interpretations. There are different perspectives on that, and some are right, and, and, and or let's say not n neither is wrong or absolutely right. So right. I think it depends on the people involved, but I think that it has to be very clear up front. Those questions need to be answered. I personally think that you know the wife <laughs> that's currently in the marriage should know, um, and I personally am of the opinion that before I even have a conversation with you, I need to know that the, the first wife is open to this, um, is aware of this. Um, and then, you know, go from there. So that's one thing. You so you're saying, and I just want to make sure we're clear here. So you're saying what's taboo is that there'll be, a, there's a lot of married brothers that are sort of coming through the back door. <laughs> and no, I just want to be clear because polygyny, we, nobody has an issue with here. Um, we're just talking about the approach, like they're coming, yeah. sleeping, sliding, mm -hmm. DMs, mm -hmm. you know, throwing mm -hmm. notes in the mess mm -hmm. shit behind, you know. <laughs> That's what we're, we're speaking of, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Mashallah. I have not gotten those types of. <laughs> okay, okay. I just want to clarify. <laughs> Bringing a bird with a note to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. I'm sorry. <laughs> This can be a very painful discussion, but it could also be a very humorous discussion as well. Um, mashallah. mashallah. But, um, <laughs> may, may Allah bless and guide our brothers. They're trying their best. And, you know, I mean, I mean, and we love they, them. You know, <laughs> we love them. That's why we have the dialogues, because we love them. <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> no, I will say in my experience, it's been honorable. But they're because it's new in our community, right? It's it's new uh, and different. It takes on a different look and feel in the American Muslim community, right? Okay. Um, that there there are going to be some glitches. They're going to it's not going to be done perfectly, right? Um, and, and so I've I've just experienced where things could have been handled better. Okay. Mashallah. Mashallah. But I haven't had the devastating, you know, experiences yeah. with that. Um, at least on my end. Now, I, I don't know how it's looked on the other end with you know the the wife that that may have been very devastating because that's a they're, they're coming at it from a different you know vantage point or so so mashallah um but yeah i think that so then they're alongside what i was just saying then you also have the, the single brothers who are filling themselves because they because for some reason there's this there's this notion or this perception floating out there that we muslim women are so desperate Mm -hmm. And that there's such a lack of, of Muslim eligible, qualified Muslim men that they think that they can just have all four and then some, right? So th then you come into contact with brothers who may be single, who are, before they even get married, they're trying to like find their four. <laughs> You're like, wait a second, brother, can we just like, what about, <laughs> what about 
just getting to know each other, you know, like what? So anyways. Where does that process go? <laughs> Do I know your name first? Gee, I'm telling you. You can know? I can I just interject for just one second? Please. With, with that Please. point that you made about polygamy, um, do I, I've often wondered about like when you become a single woman in the Muslim community, and you go to these single events, right? Which to me, I really don't like them because they make <laughs> I don't because I think they just make you feel like, you know, you're sitting there and you're waiting for somebody to choose you, and that just does not really translate well with me, but. I guess like when you went in the Muslim community, I didn't, I never really felt like the married couples, right? Really looked at single women, like, oh, she's a good sister. I should connect him, her with this brother. And I, I wondered if because you're single and mm. they're married, do they feel as though I don't really want to introduce her to someone else because like that they think that, you know, maybe we would be like attracted to their husbands, which is, you know, like most of us are not really trying to be so much second wife. You know what I mean? Like we're not just because we're single doesn't mean that we are looking at every man that's in front of us, you know? And so I, I, I've i always felt like during my time when I was single, even before I got you know married again, it wasn't like a lot of people were coming saying, I would like to introduce you to someone. I feel like as a community, like that should be something that we look and help one another. You know what I mean? Like we really do look to say, She's a good sister like you. You know, it took you a while. You know what I mean? And so uh, where's that disconnect, I guess, is what mm. I'm asking. Where does that happen? If I could jump in, Ziada. You know what I noticed, though, Ziada? I noticed mm -hmm. that there, I see people, like, for the single brothers, I see mm -hmm. a whole people lining up, saying they're going to hook them up. I see that all the time. Absolutely. But sisters, right. Absolutely. not so much. Or I should right. say definitely divorced, um, definitely divorced women. I definitely don't see that. I don't all. either. Yeah, yeah, I don't either. Yeah. That's so how, that's I don't the interesting that. point. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You bring up a very important uh, topic that has been the topic at tables that I've been at um, many a time. And something that I bring up and I've recently talked about um, is this idea that the role of the community, the role of married couples in ensuring or facilitating the marriages of the single people in the community. Mm -hmm. It's extremely important. Um, and something that came up and when I was taking notes for this um, I'm not exactly sure where it came up in the, the questions, but I was talking about how something that happens when you become single um, is for whatever reason, because of the reality of polygyny, got to mm -hmm. bring it back because mm -hmm. of the reality of polygyny, because that it's, it's new to our community. We are, you know, a few generations into Islam, most of us right. our families. Um, and then being in America and in, in, in everything in the way that it's positioned here that you become also a threat to many people. I'm just going to come go out and say, come out and say, yeah, it. Yeah, it's true. and you, and you sense it. So something that I did, and I was, I was privy to this before when I was a teenager, you know, I have to go back to my own mother, may Allah be pleased with her, mm -hmm. who um, was single the same, around the same age that I was single, about 35. My mother never remarried, mashallah. Mm, mashallah. I pray that that is not my, um, destiny, but much inshallah. So, so my mother was single, but so I, so I saw this growing up, but then you feel mm -hmm. it when you become a single woman in the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. of the reality and the, the lingering presence of, of, of the, the potential of polygyny, um, it's something that a lot of, a lot of married Muslim women don't know how to mm, don't know how to navigate in that regard of it and the regard in regards of helping the single people remember it's, it's a very strange thing so um but because i was aware of it and experienced it coming up and then i found myself in that position and then i start to sense it mm. and i understand i've been married i've been in that space of feeling um vulnerable and feeling like maybe my husband might marry, take on a second wife, right? Mm. Since I've been there, I can I can empathize with the the married woman, um, and I find myself even with some of my dearest friends. And this may be an adab thing, you know, but when I'm around them and their husband is there, it's like your brother ain't getting no attention from me. None. No None. attention. None. You know. None. Um, None. And it's I'm sitting all the way across right? the room. <laughs> <laughs> you give us a lounge, you're not making eye contact, right? 
like down the floor, you know. Don't know, don't know his name. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, 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 you know, before you guys might have been cool when you talk, become single, you know, it's just something that's in the air, mashallah. And, and I don't want my beloved sisters to feel threatened in any way. You know, like you right. were saying, Ziada, and I wrote this in one of my blog posts on Hagar Liz about so sometimes the women that think that you're after their husband, it's like, I don't want your husband. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of times, you know, and I, like I said, may Allah have mercy on us. Right, mm -hmm. the the heart is a sensitive thing. I understand. Mm -hmm. I've, but I've humble. Been, keep us humble. Amen. 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 And we don't. Mm -hmm. We not. I mean, mashallah, we over here having a good time. We're not making light of the feelings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we know that. We we're not making light of. Nor are we saying anything. I, I know yeah. I'm not opposite against yes. no. or anything yes. like that. It's just absolutely. Yes, this yes, is yes. the reality. This, this is, is just a real reality. conversation. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I'll and I'll stop. I won't go down that road any further. But I'll say to no, Ziada's point that you know, there is this, there's this lack of love and wanting for your brother, what you want for yourself, not as far as Absolutely. polygyny, not like, you know, yeah. giving your husband to another right. woman, but just as, as far as just hooking them up and looking out for them, just a single mate, right? You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. the no. polygyny aside, the yeah. polygyny aside, there's Absolutely. something that's lacking there for whatever reason. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I think, have, I think I have some... my opinions, but I'm not going to, this may okay. not be the time and place, but go ahead. Zia. I know exactly what you're saying, but go ahead, Z. Oh, no, I think sometimes I think like you were speaking, like even when you were married, like, you know, you you thought about your friends, but you didn't really understand the value to I wouldn't say that you didn't value them. Right. But it's not until after you go through a divorce that you really understand the importance of relationships, period. Right. Like you said, with your male friends, your female friends and just how dear they are to you and how you should have them in your life, because it brings a balance and a perspective that really does help you understand what you want for your brother, what you want for yourself, because you've gone through those things, you know, and you know what it feels like to be on the other side. And I'm not wishing that someone goes through a divorce to really understand it. I'm not, I think that I want them to stay in a place of love and in their marriage. But if, like you said, if you are in a loving marriage and you have a really good husband, wouldn't you want everyone else to experience that also? So if you see someone that you admire in your community and, you know, people come up to you and say, you're such a great sister. You know, I love you. I think you're so strong and you're beautiful. You're that. Well, then hook me up then. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, if you say that you love me, yeah. you know what I mean? Then love me enough to say, I want to see her in a good relationship. Or even if she, you know that she, she's getting with someone, be honest with her. Pull her to the side and say, sister, I really do love you. I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't think that that's a really good choice for you. And if they really, if they really respect you, we'll listen. You know, so we really do have to practice exactly what we are preaching. You want for yourself, you know, you want for your sister what you want for yourself. You know, you treat others the way that you want to be treated. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Stop, you know. You know, stop just badgering sisters about just be patient, sis. Just be patient, sis. I get that, even if the intention is pure, I just, uh, you know, I just don't always feel like it's helpful. You know what I mean? Like, it's when people are ready, they're ready to get married. And yeah, oh, yeah. that sometimes yeah. there's a judgment that comes with that. But, um, Aisha, we do have to kind of come to the end of this. And, um, Ziad, I'm going to get to the questions in a second. I want to ask okay. this really important thing. And I know we talked about it off script, Aisha, but mashallah, um, we are super ecstatic <laughs> over here at the Double Zone podcast because Aisha, inshallah, the Baraka Allah, please make dua for her, but inshallah, mm. she is embarking on her new journey, inshallah, of marriage. So she is, uh, what is the old school word for intended? Is it in throw? In, what is it in for engagement? Anyway, she is, in, she is engaged, inshallah. Um, I wanted to just ask a question around that. How did you know? Or could you share some tips of navigating all the, you know, chit chatters, the backdoor brothers? How did you know? And you don't have to share specifics, but how did you know within yourself that this was probably more so like the one? Mm, inshallah. Um, wow. Just a feeling within you. You don't have to give any specifics about the brother. About your brother okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would say the the main thing is that um, oh man, M my personal sensing the sincerity, you know, um, the taqwa that I was talking about, um, seeing that this person puts God first, 
And and even though sometimes that may come off as feeling, have me feeling like, oh, I'm not getting, you know, the attention that I may need. But then you, re I've realized over this time period that um, you're not going to always, you're not going to, you shouldn't be looking to get everything you need from your spouse, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to be pointed in that case because they can't give you everything. You have to put a law first. And then like those other relationships, you know, with family, with children, with friends, which are so important. Um, but yeah, you know, that if they put a law first, there's a certain way they're going to carry themselves in all regards. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was that was made pretty clear from the beginning. Um, also that this person. So what did I things that I saw maybe lacking in previous conversations or courtships mm -hmm. um, is that uh, the brother kept showing up. Right. And mm -hmm. like this idea of or maybe how. Um, I was listening to an interview with Taraji P. Henson and she was talking about this, the, the love of her life or something and how like basically he fought for her. Like, you know, so, and, and sometimes because of what I've went through, what I've gone through, um, I may find myself if with every little thing that may happen that may seem a little questionable, mm -hmm. I'll kind of, it's all, I don't know, it's a, it's, it's a form of self-sabotaging where it's kind of like, okay, this is not something, this is not good. So maybe this is not meant to be, or we need to like stop here. This is this, something isn't going well, or this isn't right. Right. Um, and then sometimes you'll, the brother will be like, okay, you're right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Like, like them. Whereas uh, what I mean by showing up or fighting for you, is like, no, no, we're good. You know? <laughs> so I guess, so in that regard, and then also being like, a leader in the situation. Like I, for me, this is personal. I need someone who's going to be the leader in, like, and I'm going to follow your lead. So when I get weak in my judgment, or if I'm starting to feel like, mm, maybe not, but you're like, no, we're good. This is, this is a part for, you know, for the course. Right. Um, so things like that, you know, showing up, being consistent, um, having some seriousness about you. Um, taqwa, taqwa, taqwa at least as it's being revealed to me, inshallah. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We're constantly striving. Mm -hmm. um, seeing that that person is is striving, you know? Um, and Allahu alam, you know, every day, every moment, it's like, inshallah, you know? Um, Allah knows best. But Allah inshallah. Knows best. inshallah, we keep you on your, we keep um, you in our duas and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with what you need and what you want and what you desire. Mm -hmm and what is good for you and what leads you to him ultimately mm -hmm. at me. Mm -hmm. And likewise. I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. thank you, Jazakallah Khairan. Okay, Ziada, so I know we're kind of, we need to pull into the end. So do we have any questions or, I'm just gonna um, questions. Is it just comments? It's more just, some people said that, um, that, that some people, that the reason why some didn't suggest, you know, um, and a potential mate to some Muslim sisters is because they really don't know anyone. So. We could think that they are trying to hold out and not give you someone, but really they don't know anyone that they may feel is worthy of you. And that's a great perspective. You know what I mean? Yeah. That sometimes it could be that they'll know someone that may be single, but when they look at you, they may not think that you would be a good, they, they would be a good fit for you. So that was one of the things. And that's 100% facts. Cause I know I, I've been asked many times of, do you know brother? And I was just like, I really don't know a soul that would be a good fit for you. So that's right. absolutely true. Thank you for bringing that perspective. In. You're welcome. Well, I can just say this, um, Aisha, this has been a journey in itself. I appreciate you being candid and honest about the weight. I know there's so much more we could have delved into, but I think you tackled this so beautifully. I wanted to just express gratitude to you, mm -hmm. Aisha, for coming on, sharing your story, being vulnerable, coming Absolutely. out of your comfort zone. <laughs> Thank you, Sabria. You are a blessing. Ziada, when I, when I saw that you were going to be the co-host, I was like, you know, this is like a conversation amongst girlfriends. Oh, uh, mashallah. Thank you. <laughs> So, and even though I we haven't been physically in each other's presence in what the in last time. plus years, yes, it's been a moment. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, but I, I, you have the same beautiful spirit and essence mashallah. that I. Oh, mashallah! Thank you so much, mashallah. So, um, alhamdulillah, that made it easy because, mm -hmm. like, okay, I do an audio or live, and I was like, maybe an audio, and she's like, no. So she really encouraged me to come. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And we appreciate it. I, I I appreciate your words. And I tell people all the time, Atlanta is my second home and my heart is truly in Atlanta. And I love the Muslim community in Atlanta. I miss you all dearly. So that means a lot. 
to be remembered. It's been 10 years and I, I really appreciate your words. It's very nice. Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. Thank you guys. And I just wanted to express sincere gratitude to you, Ziada, for always coming on oh, and being just a, my backbone behind yeah, the scenes and front of the scenes. I appreciate you so much, sis. You are so welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm honored. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. And thank you to the audience for rocking with us. I see how engaged they were. I see the viewers, mashallah. So they were really tuned in to this topic today. They and were. I appreciate all of you guys. May Allah bless you. And inshallah, please guys, because it's a little bit different, just know that we are having our next live this Saturday, the journey to stay married. So now we're gonna be talking to a Muslim couple about their journey to stay married um, Saturday at 7 p.m. So we typically don't do Saturday lives, but this is a little bit different. So please join us Saturday, 7 p.m., the journey to stay married. All right, Jazakallah Khairan. Inshallah, you guys have an amazing, amazing, amazing evening. Take care. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you.